Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Everybody with a big shout say, pressing forward. Pressing forward. Now I'm excited about Wednesday night. Now you're going to see next week, Wednesday night, you're going to see the tabernacle. In the gym, we started putting together some, Dr. Terry Harmon says, $450,000 worth of tabernacle material to the inch that God gave Moses for the holy place and to teach us about how God dwells with us. And thank you all the men that helped us yesterday morning. Give them a great big hand. We're so glad for that. So tomorrow we start building the tabernacle. We will give tours through the tabernacle on Wednesday night. Be here. You don't want to miss it. You will get to go into the holy place exactly like Moses was told by God to build it. What does it mean to us? How we approach God. It's a fascinating study where we're exercising it among our children. Uh, our children are going to go through the museum. I mean, we're actually building a museum. You'll see it next, next Wednesday night. You will see it 15 foot tall and you will see this tabernacle on and how God dwells with his people in the Old Testament. It is going to be fascinating. I am excited. How many wants to know how God can dwell with you and how you can approach him? So you can bring your friends. We'll pass out tickets and every Wednesday night so many will get to go through it and it will be spectacular, especially in the secret place. Number two, next week's Father's Day. All the fathers, we're going to honor all the fathers. I wish, I wish that we could say that Father's Day was just like Mother's Day, but Father's Day, they don't sell as many cards, they don't sell as many flowers, and fathers somehow have been somewhere. Mother's Day is off the charts Let's change that and let's, let's go for the future and change that and make fathers heroes and let us bring back all the great fathers, grandfathers. Come on, somebody help me now. And bring your grandfather, bring your fathers. And next week uh, we're going to do home run, but not only that, but every father will get a special special gift, and, and I'm really pumped about Father's Day next week. Pressing forward. Say that again with me. You said it once, but say it again. Pressing forward. Paul is the writer of this. Let's talk about him just for a moment. Paul, before he was converted, was killing Christians. Paul was killing people who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. That sounds so far out that Paul, well then his name was Saul, was killing anybody that believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Saul, or Paul, his name was changed, but Saul then, the old Saul, did not believe in resurrection. He came from the Sadducee side of the religious community of that day. Most of us here know that we're familiar with the trial of Jesus, knows that, that it was religious people that were involved in bringing him before Herod and Pilate. After Jesus rose from the dead, Paul was assigned in high position among the Sadducees to kill Christians, to find them. Find anybody that believes in Jesus Christ. Anybody believe in Jesus Christ here today? I can't hear you. How many believe in Jesus Christ? Let me take you back 2,000 years ago. They're coming after you. We got to hide. We got to go to the caves. We got to get out of here. Go into catacombs. Everybody that believes in Jesus, go. Go. The Bible says that 
when the Holy Spirit fell, Jesus had even prophesied that it would fall in Jerusalem first and then in Samaria and then in Judea and into the uttermost. God himself knew the church would be scattered because there would be heresies that would try to kill, try to kill Christians. Now what happened was that Saul in his pursuit We read in the 8th chapter of Acts where he holds the coat of a deacon called Stephen. He was not a preacher. Stephen was not a preacher. He was like an elder and deacon. All of these that were up here today would be in that category, elder and deacon. They're anointing. They're believing. They're standing. They're serving. The Bible says that Stephen was killed. He was stoned while Saul, that was his name then, was holding Stephen's coat, watching him being killed. He was the one that tried Stephen and said, kill him. He's standing there watching an innocent man who is a born-again believer. He is dying. The Bible then says, and this will be an encouraging word to everybody watching and here today, that God loves everybody we don't we don't as human beings we are weak I just got all of you I hope hope I can deliver you after getting you here in this thought pattern to actually say I hate this guy why would he do that or I brought you to a place in which you thought That's terrible. This guy is terrible. Now I got to tell you, Jesus meets him on the Damascus Road, appears to this bad guy, and saves him and changes his name from Saul to Paul. And he turns the world upside down. So now when I tell you that God loves everyone, whether we accept them or not, we should clap and say, thanks be to God. God converted this man, Saul, and now his name is Paul, writes most of the New Testament, turns the world upside down. He had no confidence in the writing uh, to the Philippians in our scripture today for you, all of you today. When he writes and says these words, he says, he says, "I, I press toward the calling, the high calling. In other words, he says, I press to the high or for the high calling of God. He is telling us in Philippians 3, he is saying these words. He is saying, brethren, I count not myself to be apprehended, but this one thing I do. And I'm going to say to everybody, whether you're a Christian or not, You will never get beyond your pain, your struggle, your whatever you're going through, you will never get beyond it. I don't care who you are, Christian or non-Christian, until you start forgetting those things that are behind you. Let's talk about that for a moment because here is Paul. Here is Paul saying in this writing, I had no confidence in the flesh. He's writing to us and says, he's saying, I have no confidence in the flesh. How many knows our flesh is weak? I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you. I could take you to someone who's perfect. I haven't met her. I haven't met him. And when I do, it will be in heaven. Nobody is perfect. I wish they were. Yes, we are changed. Yes, the Holy Spirit comes in. But we cannot depend on our flesh. But he was in a state of conscience in perfection. Not as though that he had already attained either and and was already perfect. He he knew even though he was justified by faith, he was called by God, filled and born again. He had had reached, he, Paul, he he had not reached 
his own ideal of what Christian might be. He had not obtained from Christ all that he expected to obtain. He was not sitting down to rest and be thankful, but he was hurrying on, reaching after something which was still beyond him. I've come today to tell you there is something right ahead of you that is a prize. I announce to every person under the sound of my voice, you better hear this, I believe that it will encourage you, that right above you, you're an inch away, a foot away, but you must get into the pressing, the pressing, and the pressing process is forget your past. If you're not careful, you will go through all kinds of mental emotionalism because of failures, because of what's happened to you. You lost the job, you're bankrupt, they picked up your car and repossessed it. Somebody has talked about you, you're behind, you've lost your credit cards, you're trying to achieve, but you made a mistake, she left you, he left you. All of these things that get us in a position to wallow in our pain, and pain will come. Let me tell you, God doesn't deliver you from pain because pain has the ability to put you in depressed mode. I'm not staying here. I, I've cried long enough. I have, I've been depressed long enough. I, I, have, I, have, I have been aggravated long enough. I have been angry long enough. Somebody help me here. What, what else can I say? I have had doubts long enough. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I can't say it enough because if you say it a thousand times until you forget what you're sorry about, you can't press to the next level of your life. One good hand clap from anywhere in the building and even watching. And in this struggle of life, we cannot sit back and say, God, you saved me. God, you delivered me. We got to press. Paul is talking about press. Then he talks about forgetting, 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 forgetting about the F's and the D's on our report card. I personally am embarrassed. Thank all of you that you came to this church and you didn't come to the altar and said, could I see your sixth grade report card? Could I see your Southmore report card? I promise you, you will never see my senior report card. There are some letters on that year in my junior and my senior year. I hope that you will never find out. Now somebody's saying, got to get into the internet. I'm going to become a hacker. I must find out his grades. I hope you don't because I already feel bad that I could not pass geography. It was boring. What does it have to do with life? Who cares? I'm just talking about me now. Who cares how deep the sea is? Who cares about how tall the mountain is? What's that got to do with me functioning in life? And I'm not saying that's bad, please. I'm not critical of the education, and I think that has its place, etc. But I didn't do well in it. And if people hold me to the standards of my grades, I will never be accepted by anybody. So what do I do? I'm not showing it to you. I'm not sharing it with you. But let me tell you what I am doing. I'm forgetting my 11th grade and my 12th grade. And I'm going to, do I have anybody that can press? I failed on my bills when I first got married. I, I didn't pay them on time. I thought that bill collectors were forgiving. 
I didn't know that five or six years later with $50 bills and $40 bills that when I went to get a car, they checked my credit. And I thought the bill collectors, I gave them the money. I was just only 60 days late. And I thought they would be happy with the completion of my giving them my money. But I found out they did not forgive me even though I gave it to them with interest. They marked me up and put me in a category of bad credit. And I thought, who in the world would even do this? And I cried about it, and I sat down. This is not fair. They got the money. I paid. I paid. And I remember, I, I borrowed uh, uh, one time $650 for anybody remember the, uh, the, uh, the 8-track, I believe, uh, uh, videotape decks. <laughs> And you put this thing in, and it was movies. It was, it was how we were entertained. And I bought a $650, because uh, uh, everybody was getting one. I wanted one, and, and there was a finance. In fact, Rob Grove was here earlier this morning. He's the one, 35, 38 years ago, worked at Northwest uh, uh, Finance, and he financed a $650 deal that ended up costing me $1,230 because of interest and when I missed that payment which was only $42.95 or whatever it was I was checked on the list of bad credit I begin to inflict myself I begin to say this is horrible of course in the pain I pressed and guess what I did? I paid my bills starting them on time. And it took me another seven years, but I kept pressing, 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 pressing until I came out and my credit score is a good credit score because I kept pressing. The pearl cannot become a pearl until they say sand gets into the oyster. Until the sand slips through the oyster, there will be no pearl. Meaning, until you get sand in your life, there will never be in your chaos and in confusion and mistakes, you will never ever be able to be a pearl. You will never be able to be a diamond until you take pressure, 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 pressure. And it's easy for somebody to lift you out and to hear the sound of I feel sorry for you and oh, it's terrible. But until you, you, you can't wait on anybody to pick yourself up and say I'm going to press and I'm going to forget what has happened and I'm going for the high calling. I'm going for, I'm go anybody going for it today? I'm, I'm getting out of here. Wednesday night, a beautiful couple came after the service. They're a beautiful couple. Maybe in their early 50s, late 40s. I always come down and whoever seeks prayer along with all the other pastors that are with me, they approach me. Because these are very, very good people that come here. I've watched them and observed them. Very courteous, very, I think, God-fearing people. And they said, pray for, pray for us, Pastor. I'm standing there and I, I, I've, I've, got a, I've got a few problems of my own. We all have our problems. I would like to talk about me, you know, me, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get out of debt. I'm, uh, I, I'm trying to not, you know, stress out on certain issues like carrying, like just, I could just tell you, the note of this church, uh, go to bed every night with $11 million on your mind and how will it be paid for and 
how do we accomplish that? And then, and then the, the, all of the COVID issues and, and then all of the, uh, the family and, 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 and things that happen in life. I, I'm standing there and, and I really want them to pray for me, but they said, would you pray for us? And let me tell you something that's a secret that will help you in life. What you give out will come back to you. I'm standing there and they said, we're on our way to Memphis. Oh, that's great. I lo and I love to pray for people who ask me to pray for them when they travel because I say, Lord, put an angel in each tire. Lord, put an angel, I don't know if this, I don't know if God does this, but anyway, I say it sounds good. God put an angel in the gas tank. I, I know that may be ridiculous, but if, if that prayer is prayed and God answers it and you get more mileage to your gas, you'll go back and say, do that again. Put another angel in that tank. As I prayed for Cynthia's car Friday morning, her car, I uh, prayed for it. She brought it to prayer and and she wanted me to anoint it, and I anointed all the tires, and we prayed for it, and uh, Pastor Pud and all of us, et cetera. So I, I, I said, I pray you have a safe trip in Memphis. I pray, Lord, that the angels will be with us. Now, now, I don't know why, other than they're going to Memphis on a trip. This is the season of holiday. This is a vacation, so they're going to Memphis. Then, as I begin to pray, I say, well, God bless you. Pastor, could you pray some more? I said, yes, what about? Our daughter is an Uber driver. She must have picked up somebody wrong. Gang members surrounded her car and fired bullets into her, and she had 16 bullets in her body. She leaves behind six children. I then immediately said, I don't have any problems. Let me give you another secret about pressing. Get your mind off of just you. Get the mind of Christ and press. It's a secret. It's a secret of life. Jesus said it, give and it shall be given. I'm a gasp. I'm, I'm arrested by these words. I thought I prayed an incredible prayer. I was praying for our staff members today. They were going on you know, vacation. I was, I was praying for them, Poet, Pastor Poe and I. And then I, just for a few seconds, I wonder, how am I going to pray now for these parents whose daughter has been riveted with 16 bullets in Memphis, Tennessee, who is a victim of, an, of being an Uber driver, who has six kids, which tells me she was out trying to get more money for her children. Immediately, I, now excuse me because this is going to be kind of bad here. I wanted to find him. It, it happened quick. You all know what I'm talking about. Where is he? He hasn't been caught, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can find him. Lord, reveal it to me right now. Oh, why? Or who or whoever was involved was more than more, more people sounds like. Don't know the whole details. All of a sudden, I came back to the moment of pressing. I got to press here, folks. I said, I got to press. I have no choice but to press. I have no choice. I cannot wallow in this tragedy. And it's terrible, horrible, and I'm telling you it's bad, but I cannot stay here. 
somewhere I got to pick myself up and have faith and lay hands on them. And when I begin to pray, the Holy Spirit begin to give me words. And you know what the words were? I will not lay on them more than they can handle. And I'm going through my mind. That's not the word of God. That's not the word of God. Surely, no, 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 God, don't say that. Don't say that. I will not put on you more than you can handle the word of God. Meaning that whatever you're going through, God is saying press past it uh, because I would not do that to you. I am only shaking you up in chaos and I'm putting you into motion uh, because I'm getting ready to do a new thing. All of you are like me. How did it work, Pastor? Did it work? I get done praying, I tell them, I feel the power of God upon you. You're gonna cry, you're gonna feel the pain, but God is not gonna let you be normal. And people are gonna look at you and say, how in the world can you cuddle these kids? And I don't know all of the particulars in Memphis, et cetera, as they were going, but something told me that we just pushed past to something. And I want to tell everybody, if you will just listen to Apostle Paul who says, I'm telling you, you can't sit here and wallow in the bad report of the doctor. You've got to pick yourself up. Press to the high prize. Can I excite somebody here today? There is a prize above your head. And whatever you're going through is on purpose. And God is about to take you. Oh, my God. God is about to take you to another level. Who am I talking here today? Come on, press. Now, many, many are saying, uh, Pastor, I, let's go back to the shooting. Let's go back to the pain. Let's go. My God, quit talking about that. Quit talking about they got strength. Quit, uh, quit, talk, quit trying to tell them that God's going to be with them. Quit. Stop it. Come on, come on. Let's stay right here in this tragedy. When this politician, when Brother Andretti, oh, I call him Brother Andretti, when, when he was up here and we were praying I want you to know I am pressing that I know a God. There was a time when President Jimmy Carter was president, we had 19% interest in four years. But I saw that come down to 2% and 3%. It didn't do it overnight, but it came down. I am declaring in the name of Jesus that there is God. Somebody's got to help me agree. We're going to press. Come on, come on. I need a church who will pray. A church who will believe. Got to get to the point. This is a tough one. I have to forgive the president because he gets all the blame. Well, you can title him anything you want, Republican or Democrat. He's the blame guy. But before God can do a miracle, I got to quit blaming him. And human flesh and believe that God is still in control. And that if he said, I will heal your nation as long as you will forgive one another and you will humble yourself. Oh, can I help somebody here today and quit wallowing in your situation and press to the high calling. You should have seen that couple. Thank you, Pastor. We feel good. We feel, I mean, tears are running down the face. It doesn't mean they're not going to feel any pain. But the power of God, and then God showed me something. I don't know why. I haven't used this in a funeral in years. 
All of a sudden, the Bible fell open to the 57th chapter of Isaiah, first and second first. And this is what it says. In this kind of situation, a righteous man perishes and no one lays it to heart. And a merciful and a devout men are taken away with no one considering that the uncompromisingly upright and godly person is taken away from the calamity and the evil to come. Read on. In death enters into peace. They rest in their beds. Each one walks straight and in his uprightness. What is God saying? You think it was bad with the heart attack? There was something coming up ahead that would have done damage not only to their body but to their soul. And God said, it's fitting for me to take them out now because of the future would be their soul. Let me tell everybody, God is in control. Just keep pressing toward the mark. Let me help somebody today. This is a secret. I mean, it's not a secret because it's in the word of God and, and we know to do it. But let me encourage you to do it. For Isaiah 43 says these words. And God is speaking. And he says in Isaiah 43 and the 18th verse. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Next verse says. Behold I will do a new thing. And now it shall. Watch this everybody. It doesn't gradually come. It springs. I mean, it comes the minute you start forgetting about what has happened to you and start pressing to believe God. God said, I will spring that thing into action and do a new thing. Somebody clap your hands anywhere, everywhere. Pressing. Pressing. You don't understand what I've done. You don't understand what I've been through. Stay there as long as you want. Get as many people as you want. But I want to tell you the only way you can get out of that moment is to say, God, I forgive, I forget. I'm tired of being full of doubt and depression and I'm tired of being in debt and I'm tired of losing my job and God, I'm going forward and the power, the power of a new thing will spring into action as you press. Everybody shout press. press. Now I didn't say it was easy. I didn't say it was a free ride. But in your moments, in your moments, David said, let everything that hath breath. Every time David cries out, the Bible says, David said things like this in Psalms 138. In the day when I cried, thou answerest me and strengthens me with my soul. I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. Psalms 34 and 4. Too many times we display our weaknesses unnecessarily because God can forget, but people cannot. The responsibility of knowing somebody else's sin and they tell you, God has forgiven me and I got to get past you're a gang leader. You shot so many people. You're a drug dealer. You're a prostitute. Come on, you got to be honest. When they're sitting there smiling, saying, I'm saved, I'm saved. I got to get past. I got to get. I, 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 I. Anybody know what I'm talking about? 
But the moment I get past the same, I'm, I'm, not only do I forgive, I must do everything to forget. See how quiet it gets here? Because the only one that can forget is God. And the only thing you can do that God cannot do, one thing, you can remember a sin that God has forgiven you of and he forgets it. And when you bring it back up to him, he doesn't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm going to ask this audience, do you believe the word of God? The reason why we, we can't get past where we are, whatever the circumstances are, is because we keep reminding God of something he doesn't know. Well, I will, I, I'm going to get you to the place you, that, that is going to jar you. You're going to say, that, that's impossible. That's the reason why God is God and you're not. <laughs> Quickly, several, several, several secrets of uh, life. Jesus does it over and over again. You're going to be offended. Bishop Jakes years ago, told me, probably 10, 12 years ago, whatever you do, don't Google your name. In other words, don't, don't Google your name. I laughed about it. I said, really? I'm not that popular. You start achieving in life, whatever that might be. And the haters come out of it everywhere and put stuff that's a lie. So I did that about seven, eight years ago. I don't, I don't do that now. I don't know what your social media. I don't even know why I got all these hundreds of thousands of people that follow me because I don't feed it. Every now and then I will do a, you know, tweet, but I don't feed it. I'm on Facebook praying, but I, 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 all of the people that are on staff and people who take care of that, they do that. I, I don't feed it because I reacted to it. They're lying about me. One Google said, he's six foot two. <laughs> he has $30 million. And I... Text back, could you tell me where that is? <laughs> and I have been tired of being five foot nine and a half. I'll take the six and a half. Mr. And then people would start saying things, just outright not true. I never told you this is a, this is a secret. Not now. I did not know that you could cuss with signs. And found out there are signs. Look, am I stupid? Do you know what I'm talking about? You, you, can, you, you, can, you can have signs and they mean cuss words when you're texting or whatever. And I said, to, now this is years ago, this is not recently, so don't, don't say, I got, I got to find out that. I got to see what he put. So I reacted by these signs. You, but it didn't say it. And I begin to wallow in what they said and begin to inflict myself 
trying to justify myself. And guess what? All prayers were stopped being answered. And God said, you don't want me to fight your battle? I hope you do a good job. Keep pressing the signs. And I realized that in that moment, I had to forgive. Oh, that's not a, that's not a popular thing. I had to forgive someone I don't even know. But they're not the one going to get the prize. I'm the one that's going to get the prize. And so I rise up and I press and I say, I forgive you. And all of a sudden, God. And everybody shout, amen. Amen. And Paul talks about that. He says, don't just sit there and try to figure it out. I know we have courts. I know we have law. I know lawyers and all of that. And that's the reason why that is in place, so that they can do it and you won't do it, so your spirit won't get messed up. So, so um, Malachi and I yesterday, um, uh, I, in my neighborhood, I have lived there 39 years. And uh, in my neighborhood, you, I, I, you know, you, you know when houses go for sale and then you, you see them move out and then you see a new family move in. So I saw this new family move in on the corner where we turn all the time to go to our house. I'd stopped two weeks ago. The boys were in the parking lot, and I rolled down my window and said, hey, welcome. You could tell they were a little stunned, and I drove on. A couple days ago, I saw the two girls walking their dog. I think they're about 13 or 12. And I stopped, rolled down the window. Hi, welcome to the neighborhood, and then just kept driving. So I told Malachi, you know, I know I'm not the welcome committee. I don't know if they have a welcome committee in our in our, uh, our neighborhood, so I, I said to Malachi, I said, let's buy some flowers, get a card, let's go to their house and welcome them to our neighborhood. Amen. So we drive up into the driveway. The door immediately opens. You know how it feels when you're a brand new person in a neighborhood. And you know the IRS is not coming, and you know you're not going to be arrested, and you know, you know, there's nobody you're expecting, and all of a sudden, here comes a car. And Malachi said, he's got the door open. Now, in this situation, because my neighborhood is becoming coming international, and it's just phenomenal, he sees I am white. And you could tell. Uh oh. And I say, I could tell the defense mechanisms are up. He moves away from the door and starts coming toward me. I get out of the car. I immediately hand him flowers. (laughs) I hand him a card. Welcome to our neighborhood. Immediately. He doesn't know who I am. I didn't come in the name of the church. I didn't come as a preacher. I didn't come to invite him to Family Christian Center. In fact, I didn't even want him to know I was a preacher. I'm a neighbor. Because I read in the Bible one time, love thy neighbor as thyself. Malachi is getting out of the car now, my old, you know, my oldest grandson. And he starts immediately. Now watch, watch what's happening here. I could tell he's astounded that I'm even there. I can tell he's in shock. He don't know what to do. And immediately, just like a river coming out of his mouth, he starts telling me, my girl last year got killed. She was on the Dan Ryan. The guy that hit her didn't have license. They never arrested him. 
They never did nothing to him. He's free. But my daughter's dead. He's telling me, I've given her a pot of flowers. And I'm taking in all of this and I'm kind of sorting out, okay, I better tell him I'm a preacher so I can pray for him. Okay. And he said, I made up in my mind. Now, all of you that live in Illinois, don't, don't be offended by this, but this is the way he said it to me. He said, I'm done. He said, I'm done. He said, I'm, I'm going to cross that line. I'm done with these taxes. He goes through all of these allegations of state and all that he's going through. I'm just standing there. He's holding my flowers. He is hurting. After he gets done, I said, I, 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 didn't, I couldn't say I was going to pray for him. I was coming undercover. <laughs> really, I'm telling you the truth. I told Malachi, we're not going to tell him that I'm a preacher. Because I wanted to come in the name of love. I wasn't coming to preach to him, are you in heaven or hell? Do you go to church? Do you have a church? You need to go to church. This was this. No, no, no. After he tells me that, I say, well, let me tell you something. We welcome you to this neighborhood because I, I couldn't pick the fight. I don't know the fight. I don't understand totally what's going on. All I can do is not agree, but try to give him hope. It's going to be better. I, help me, I, uh, I didn't, uh, I said to him, you're going to have, you have a great future here in our neighborhood. Then all of a sudden I had to reveal my identity. Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Muncie. I passed the Family Christian Center. He jumped about two feet in the air, turned around and spinned and started screaming at the open door. You never believe who's here. I immediately thought that maybe they attended Family Christian Center. Maybe they cut. You never believe here. He looked right at me. He said, My wife, last Christmas, Dragged me to Scrooge. I don't go to church. I don't like church. But she said it was a family event. And I went. And sir, those angels flew over my head. That bed came after me. Kids, he's screaming now to his kids. Kids, he's here. Scrooge is here. By the way, they might be here this morning. If you're here, guys, uh, I'm trying to tell the story, so we love you because I did invite them. <laughs> Brings me into my house. Introduces me to all of his children. Not, you know, he's having a 90 year old mother that has moved in with him. His wife wasn't there. He was so excited. He said, I never seen anything like that. All the teenagers, the kids, they were just elated. They remember me. I said, do you remember I said hello to you when you were playing basketball? Yeah, yeah, we remember. The girl said, we remember. I said, let me tell you. This is going to be the best neighborhood. You don't have to worry about anybody. And if anybody messes with you, I've lived here 38 years. And all of a sudden, you could see them pressing How many people can you get to press into that high calling? And I told them, Malachi was standing there and he was talking too. I said, I didn't come here to invite you to our church. I didn't come here to tell you I was a preacher. I came here to welcome you. But you could see he was wallowing but when I came with the Holy Spirit inside of me, watch, he forgot. 
and started talking about, are you hearing what I'm saying? Paul is saying, press! Toward the mark. I wish we could find the perfect church and the perfect pastor because I'd be the first one to join. Perfect staff, perfect organ player, perfect singers. Come singers, help me. I wish. Hey, hey. I wish I could find perfect saints. But I discovered and is not going to happen. Because we're not going to be perfected until we press to go to heaven. Have I helped somebody today? Has the word of God, and not me, but the word of God. Stand to your feet. If, you, if you've gotten any kind of word, just stand to your feet and give the Lord a great big hand clap right now all over this building. Oh, yeah, I want to clap my hands. God not only forgives you, he forgets it. I'm going to tell you, we don't teach this strong enough because we, live, uh, we believe in the grace of God, and, and we do. But there are seven things that God hates. Listen, everybody, whether you, there are seven things that God hates. Just remember this, Proverbs 6. Proverbs, what? Where's it at? Where's it at? I can't hear. What did I say? Proverbs 6. That's Old Testament. God said there are six things, and the seventh one is abomination. The minute you bring up somebody else's sin that God has forgiven. Now, I'm not talking about generally the whole world because they haven't asked God to forgive. But the people of God who have said, Lord, forgive me. And God forgets it. And you talk about it. There's an abomination that comes upon you. That's the reason why he teaches us, love your neighbor. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those that spitefully use you. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus, Jesus says these words. And everybody, you're not going to say amen, but I'm going to make you say amen to it anyway because it's, it's the pressing part of this. Blessed are ye. Anybody want to be blessed? Shout amen. amen. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and say all manner of evil you're going to get it from every side but let me tell you don't wallow in it forgive and press somebody shout press and today today your pastor when I came in here today I had a a spiritual uh, box. Where's Teresa? Come here, Teresa. Stand right in the middle. You sweet thing, wonderful, precious, great lady. Just stand right here. And when I, when I came in today, none of you knew it because I have to make my own worship. But I brought a box of alabaster of worship. And I begin to pour it on his feet. How can you do that? Because I'm not pouring it on your feet. I'm pouring it on his feet. You are a whore. You are a whore, Mary. And I love these words. All of you should love these words. Leave her alone. So I'm telling everybody here today that's worshiping God, 
God is saying to the devil, leave him alone. Come on, clap, clap like you are excited about that. And today in this service closing, this is not about if you're bad or good. This is about, elders come quickly, stand with me. This is about somebody that's in the press. You want to leave unbelief. You want to leave discouragement. You, you want to leave sickness. You want to leave something that you are in battle with. And today when I count to three, show God that you're ready to press. Press enough to not uh, worry about what people think, but only what God. And the Bible says come boldly and I'm going to close this service with a prayer. And I don't know who you are, but don't be ashamed. And when you come up here, I'm going to pray a prayer. And you are getting ready to move into another dimension of high prize. Anybody want the high prize, the high calling? So if you are in that situation of press, on the count of three, come right now. One, two, three, come. Come, just sing a little bit as they're coming. Come, come from all over the building. Come. I'm in the press. Come. Hallelujah. Everybody join in. The death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation. your right hand if you have that or a left and everybody say I am going to press I am going to press there is a prize there is a prize there's a higher level there's a higher level this week this week now listen to this prayer father every person that's heard this word I hope it's a word of encouragement let them not worry you have forgiven us and you have forgotten you love us if you loved Apostle Paul enough to save him, if you loved Peter who backslid, if you loved the prostitute who worshiped you, then Lord, you've forgiven us and you forget. Lord, let every person not wallow in the moment, but press and begin to experience the high prize. And I just want to tell somebody prophetically that your pain is on purpose so that you will press to a new level in God. And somebody shout amen. Amen. Don't miss Wednesday night. God bless you. Every person that is up here, put your hand on your heart and say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I ask you now. I ask you now. Take the unbelief. Take the unbelief, the hurt, the, hurt. the discouragement. The the discouragement. If there is anything in my heart, if there is anything in my heart, let your blood, let your blood, cover me now. Cover me now. I am now. I am now going to forgive. Going to forgive myself, myself, others, others, and Lord, and Lord. I'm going to the next level. I'm going to the next level. I'm going to forget those things behind me. Those things behind. And right now, and right now, I press. I press for the miracle. For the miracle. For the high. For the high. The prize. Now lift your hands and begin to just say hallelujah. I'm praying the Holy Spirit sing it. Father in the name of Jesus, let the Holy Spirit rest. Let it come upon every let the, let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon every individual. Father, let the power of your presence, let it set free. Set free in the name of Christ. Father, let the power of your presence come upon every individual. Every individual. Every individual. Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, Father, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come, fill them. Now all of you 
rejoice. David always said rejoice when this happens. Come on, rejoice for this word to set you free. And when you leave here today, you're going to walk into the high calling. There's a prize out there, Monday, Tuesday. Before you leave today, I want you to do something. COVID uh, is over. I want you to shake the elder's hand and say, thank you for praying for me. Before you leave, and if you'll give me your name, we'll take it. If you want to join the church, we do. But just shake their hand and say, thank you for praying for me. See you Wednesday night. God bless you. What that was a powerful word, and I know that it came out of me, but I just want to tell you that God is interested in you, and God is interested in expanding, and God is interested in doing. We have prayed for gas prices to come down. We have prayed for our inflation numbers. We have prayed for the interest rates. I am believing that God is going to supply all of your needs. We live by faith. We cannot live by our works. It's fun sometimes to say, you know, I have this, I have this, I have this much savings, I have this house, I have this. But let me tell you, when we live by faith, even though God gives us all those things, the great thing is that when we feel like we're up against and there's no supply for the need, God always supplies the need. He forgives us. He loves us. He cares for us. When we make the mistakes, when we are tempted, He is forgiving. He is graceful. As we are graceful to one another, so God is so much more gracious to us. So let today be the day in which this word touches you. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every single viewer, touch them. Let the touch of peace, the peace, Peace, come right now and heal. Heal the, heal the crier, heal the brokenhearted, heal the sufferer, heal the one that needs to be healed through sickness. And oh God, touch us, because I believe today was your word. And I'll see you at the tabernacle in the secret place, Wednesday.